unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I just got to my beautiful build spot, and as soon as I got here, flash storm, and what little forest there is is going to burn down. Welcome back, everybody, to Icarus. I am an old guy gaming, and we just had the week 14 update come out with a bunch of improvements to farming, including irrigation now. Um, and so I've been doing a lot of speed runs and short missions, and I think it's time to slow down and stop and smell the roses for a while. Um, so what I think we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do Spirit Walk. So Spirit Walk is um, a 30-day mission that basically opens up the entire map to us. Okay. So According we don't UDA, get any money for this, but what I'm thinking we'll be able to do... To you. Shut up, Saul. <laughs> what I'm Not thinking... a lot of folk have survived this far. Where do you want to go? Okay. Um, what I'm thinking we should be able to do is scan for um, exotics in all the different zones and get just a ton of exotics plus have some time to you know just just enjoy the game and not be in such a rush all the time um, I did this early on too in Argos in the in the forest biome uh, but now that this will give us access to all the biomes uh, the idea is we set up a base I'm going to I'm going to live in the Riverlands. I have a, a spot that I want to live in uh, in the Riverlands. That's where we're going to set up our main base. But then, um, <clears throat> you know, once we get to the point where we can build the scanners and all that sort of thing, you know, then we start um, exploring and going into the different zones and, you know, looking for exotics so we can bring back a whole load. That's the idea. But the other idea is to just enjoy the game and, and you know, take some time slow down and not uh, keep doing speed runs and stuff like that. Incidentally, uh, I did make another character. Um, let's go back and take a look. Uh, I did make another character that, uh, and I, I called him Hardcore Runner, this guy here. And I've been using him to run um, Dust Up Hardcore and Deep Vein Extraction. And as you can see, um, let's go back to here, select character. As you can see, uh, we have a lot of money now uh, from doing that. I've got uh, three, uh, 3,375 Rin. Um, and so, but it's the exotics that I'm really trying to build up right now because um, the the real high-end, you know, top-end tools uh, require exotics to purchase and not money. So we got tons of, of Rin now, uh, but we need to keep working on the exotics. Uh, so I might still continue to use Hardcore Runner, the other character, to keep doing those um, you know, uh, speed runs and keep building things up while we're taking a little more time on our main character and just, you know, stopping to smell the roses. So that's, that's the idea behind this. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's take a look at the loadout here. So everything in my loadout here is, is going to be real easy to replace if I get to, into a situation where I have to leave some of this behind in order to make enough room to carry all the exotics back. Okay. Uh, so none of this stuff is super expensive, and you see how much money I have now, so it's just not a big deal to re-buy these things uh, if I have to, you know, leave them behind. Now, um, the uh, obviously that wouldn't apply to the armor or the modules or the backpack, but, you know, if I had to leave, say, like the knife or the furnace behind or, um, you know, even, even the dong pickaxe is not that expensive to replace, I can do that. I do have one extra slot. Now, I thought about taking my my Zhang Hu bow, but this one is expensive to replace. This one is 750 Rin and, uh, let's see. Yeah, 750 Rin and 250 uh, exotics. So that's that's very pretty darned expensive. I can certainly afford to do that, but that's just really expensive. So, um, for and because this is going to be a long-term... Um, uh, prospect, right? Uh, I, I don't, you know, I don't really need anything else here. The bow would certainly come in handy. I guess we could take the axe. Yeah, let's take the axe. We might as well. Is that way we have an axe right off the bat? And again, if I have to leave any of this behind, it's not, not going to be a big deal to replace it. 
In fact, the only thing I really have right now that that is going to be expensive to replace uh, is is the you know my Zhang Hu bow and these couple of these Envirus are kind of expensive too. Now the other thing I thought about was getting the modules that give me more carry weight and inventory space, but I decided not to do that. We're going to stick with the mass damper modules because you know if if the whole entire map's open to me, speed is going to be huge. Because it's just going to take so long to get everywhere, so we're gonna we're gonna stay with the speed option. Um, I could bring, I suppose I could bring the survival backpack instead, because we get the five movement speed. But this is just such a huge benefit, you know, to have that extra carry weight for ore and wood and stuff. That uh, I think we'll we'll stick with this one instead. Okay, so that all being said and done, let's go to new prospect, and this is going to be as usual. Um, you know, we go, we go do it. Uh, wait, where is it? Spirit walk. Uh, right here. Okay. So we go do it and, um, I will just give you guys updates uh, as things go along. So, you know, the vast majority of my time is just going to be off camera enjoying the game, but I will, you know, give you guys updates on how we're doing. Um, in, you know, I don't know how many episodes this will be. It might even just be one episode for you guys, um, but you know I'm I'm quite a quite a ways ahead of all of you um, with the videos, so I I can afford to take some time off, if you will, <laughs> and just enjoy the game without having to record all the time, um, while you guys kind of get caught up. So we'll just see how things go. I I don't know that I'll be here for actual for actually 30 days either, but you know we'll see how things go. I got that option. All right, so let's go ahead and get okay. started with this. According to the UDA. You just graduated. This whole terror zone's open to you. Congratulations. Not a lot of folk have survived this far. Where do you want to go? UDA reckons you're safe to work this whole region unguided. I'd say they're probably right. But don't let it go to your head. It's still Icarus. Stay safe. Huh. The text that popped up there was not the same thing he actually said. Okay, so question number one. Where exactly are we at? We are actually in the Riverlands. Well, that was convenient. Um, okay. So, if I was approaching this practically... The map seems to be a little weird. Uh, a, a more central location would make more sense. However, it's the Arctic biome is what's actually in the center <laughs> of the Terra Zone. So that, you know, who in the hell wants to live in the Arctic biome, right? Uh, unless you're an Eskimo, maybe. An Eskimo maybe. Uh, so I think what we're going to do is uh, there's a place down, kind of down over here. Um, in the Riverlands, that's it, a huge lake. It's just a gorgeous location, and I've always intended to do my big base build there. And so that's where we're going to to, to build our main base in that area. Um, and then, so once I kind of get established there, and we you know get the grind all the way up to tier four, get all the equipment that we need, and that sort of thing, you know, then I'm going to start. Uh, going out to the different zones and scanning for exotics and hopefully when this is all said and done we just load up our inventory with a ton of exotics and take those back to the space station that is the general plan okay so um i'm gonna go ahead and cut the camera here and get started and i will bring you guys back with an update like i said i don't know how many episodes this will be we might be able to get it all knocked out for you in one episode uh, or it might be a couple we'll just see how things go all right guys i'll see you in a bit with an update all right, guys, I am back with an update. I've been playing for three, four hours or so, I think. And um, so, yeah, I, uh, I set up shop here in the northern cave. Uh, when when I did one of my uh, Riverlands episodes a while back, um, we also uh, set up shop in this cave, too. Um, and I have basically I've grind ground, I guess is the word, to tier three. Um, so all of my stuff down here is tier three. We got platinum uh, knife, pick, axe. I got the shotgun and the bolt action rifle here and the aluminum bow. Okay. 
Um, and I'm going to leave all this other stuff in the pod because the pod's nearby. And when it comes time for us to leave, if I need extra room, then I'll, I'll toss it at that point. But if we don't need extra room for some reason, you know, then we might as well take that stuff back with us. So I've pretty much mined out this entire cave. And um, so, what, so what the plan is, is I'm going to pick up the tier three workstations except for maybe the furnace. I don't know. I might take the furnace with me too. Um, yeah, I'll have to think about it. Depends upon how much I can I can carry uh, when it comes time to leave. Uh, but anyway, what I'm doing now is I'm just uh, grinding out, you know, copper and gold. And I figured since I'm here in the cave and we had all these resources, I'm going to make um, just a metric butt ton of electronics and, you know, take those with us. So uh, I just finished smelting some gold here. And now this guy's working on more titanium, uh, which we will also take with us. I'm saving a couple uh, of gold ores and some iron ore for making the composite paste later. I'm not going to smelt that. And, of course, we'll have to run back up here and get it because I'm not going to be able to take that with me uh, for now. Okay, so that gives us a bunch of gold, a bunch of copper. And um, I'm, I've got a, tree, a bunch of tree sap made up here that we're waiting now to uh, turn into epoxy. Uh, I don't need any more gunpowder because I've got... 100 shotgun shells and 100 rifle rounds, so we're good on gunpowder. So, yeah, let's start turning this into epoxy. And if I can, uh, you know, if I can knock out a whole mess of electronics and just take those with me, because I don't think they're going to be that heavy, you know, then that just puts us that much further ahead when we get down to our permanent location. Uh, so let's see. Is there anything else I need to tell you guys at the moment? I don't think so. Um, yeah, the, the idea again is, you know, we'll just pick up and take with us what we can and leave all this stuff in here and come back and get it at a later point in time. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot more uh, to report uh, to you guys at this point. Um, as I had mentioned before, our plan is going to be to move down kind of in this area here uh, to set up our permanent base. I'm really excited and looking forward to it because what, you know, what my plan is again for this episode uh, or this, you know, one, two, three part episode or whatever we're doing is just to take, slow down and just really enjoy the game. Get all the way up into tier four, experience all the high end stuff. You know, so most of it I've already done, but not all of it. And usually, you know, your, your end goal is to finish a, an, an objective. And so we're just kind of slowing down and enjoying the game a little bit more. And uh, also going to look at the, the new farming stuff. In fact, let's look at that while I got you here. So I haven't done anything with it, and I'm not planning on doing anything with the farming stuff till we get to our permanent location. But uh, what we have here is a wood composter. We might as well learn it. I mean, I've got 159 points. It's ridiculous. And what this basically does is it allows you to quickly spoil food. And then it looks like it just turns the food directly into uh, fertilizer. That, that's what the description seems to imply. Um, so that's a new item that we'll be messing with. Uh, I don't know if, if there's anything new in Tier 1. I didn't actually look that close. Let's just take a quick look-see. This is with Update uh, 14, I think, yeah, that came out. And um, Oh, yeah, that needs a talent. That's right, yeah. I've been thinking about maybe respecting and getting that because it would be really useful to have. It uh, doesn't look like there's anything else new, though, here in Tier 1. So in Tier 2... Uh, we've got the wood composter uh, that's new. And by the time you guys see this, you'll you'll already know all this anyways. But it's brand new to me. So um, I don't know if they added anything new to any of this stuff over here. Uh, it doesn't really look like it. Okay, so for Tier 3, uh, all of this has been here before. All of this looks pretty much the same as far as I can tell. Uh, we got another storm coming in. I guess we can use a scroll wheel. Uh, okay, so we got the iron crop plot. And a sturdy option for farming with water intake. Okay, so yeah, for, so this one we can connect water pipes to. Do, does that mean we can't connect water pipes to the wood crop plot? Let's go back and look oh, for Pete's sake. Let's go back and look at that for a minute. This doesn't seem to imply that we can connect a water pipe to it. So, so yeah, that's new, the iron crop plot. Well, let's learn that. 
And you know what? Let's learn wine too, because we can, right? Um, wine bottle we're going to need. I don't know why we would never need a fire extinguisher in the end game, but you know what? Let's learn it because we got the points, right? We got the points. All right. Uh, so we got, and that seems like that's it for tier three. So for tier four, uh, we have portable beacon. Displays a map marker when deployed. That seems awfully, awfully expensive. I mean, 20 composites and 10 electronics just to put a map marker down? Hmm, I don't know. Seems awfully expensive. Okay, and here we got a hydroponic crop plot. So this allows us to connect water and power. And I assume in doing so, just basically causes stuff to grow faster um, or maybe, maybe more yield or something like that. Um, now, this is new. So this is the water pump. And it's not too terribly expensive, actually. It's re re actually pretty reasonable. This is the sprinkler um, that apparently will put out fires if you have them in, the, in your house. Uh, again, most end-game houses, though, uh, wouldn't catch on fire anyways, I guess. I don't know, unless someone really likes to build with wood. And then, of course, the water pipe tool, which is what we would use to lay the pipes down. I'm assuming that's going to work the same as it does for power. And then, let's see, we got growth fertilizer and high-quality fertilizer. So, the basic fertilizer, I'm assuming, is the stuff that we get out of that composter. This one requires five silica ore, this one requires five sulfur. Uh, so this one will allow or cause the crops to grow faster, but with 25% less yield. So 50% faster, 25% less yield, which is actually a pretty good trade-off because, um, you know, in the long run, you're still, you're, it's basically, um, you're still getting ultimately 25% more from a time perspective. Um, however, that's only, only going to be useful if you're always there to harvest them right when they ripen, which, you know, most people aren't. I know I'm not going to be, so I'm not sure about how useful this actually is. Uh, and then this is the opposite. Basically, you get more yield, but it takes a little bit longer. I think I would prefer this one, really, when it comes down to it, because it takes a little longer, but you get uh, twice as much again, or half as much again, rather, 50% more stuff. So this is probably one I'll be using once I get stuff set up. Okay, and I think that's it, as far as I can tell, for for the new irrigation and farming stuff. So looking forward to definitely trying that out. Anyway, all right, guys. Well, I don't think there's anything really more uh, to update you guys on at this point. So um, my plan is to kind of finish all the smelting operations and then basically pick up as much equipment as I can and take it with me down south to our a permanent build site. And like I said, I'll probably have to leave some of this stuff here and come back for it at a later point in time. All right, guys, uh, we'll see you later on at some point in time. Bye. I just said point in time like three times in a row, didn't I? I don't know. Uh, but it's the point in time now. Uh, okay, I'll go. Bye. <laughs> unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. I just got to my beautiful build spot. And as soon as I got here, flash storm. And what little forest there is is going to burn down. Well, it was it wasn't going to last anyways with me building here because the wind and fire and all that would have eventually blown them over. That's freaking disappointing though, man. Look at that wolf on fire. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, well, anyway, we're here. Um, we're not going <clears> to <throat> not gonna have any trees left when this is done. Uh, might as well start cutting some of them down to get some wood from them anyways. Uh, but anyway, this is the spot. And... Uh, Uh, try and see if we can create like a little fire break or something here because the rest of these trees are just going to turn into charcoal and then not be any good to me oh shit uh the hell man I guess that one's kind of technically on fire, eh? Anyway, um, yeah, so this is where we're going to build. And we'll just kind of... That was really unfortunate that that happened. I mean, I would have liked to have kept some trees here by the house, but I don't know. Maybe these will, will stay here.
as long as, long as those don't get hit by lightning too. <laughs> So, I don't know... Oh, for Pete's sake, really? Game? Unbelievable. Just... Ruin my building spot. That tree's technically on fire, even though... It sort of kind of doesn't look like it. <laughs> it's, gonna be, it's gonna burn down all my wood, too. Ah, oh, shit. Well, okay. Anyway... <laughs> can't do anything about it. I mean, it would have happened eventually anyways. So, yeah, this is going to be our view. And we're going to put the base, you know, build the base here. And looking out over that way. And, you know, the the sun will, will rise in the east, of course, in the morning. It's, it's probably just going to look absolutely glorious in the morning. And we'll just, we won't look that way. <laughs> we'll have to just look out this way. Uh, so, yeah, next thing I got to do now is... I got to, uh, I have to s uh, drop off all this stuff in my inventory. This is what I w was able to bring with me from uh, from up above. Uh, so we got the machining bench. I went ahead and made the fabricator. We got a concrete furnace. And um, I had to leave everything else up there. Get out of here. And I went ahead and, uh, let's see, we made the titanium knife the titanium pickaxe and the rifle uh, the hunting rifle so that's pretty much where we are so I'm gonna start getting situated here and kind of figure out you know start laying out the foundation and uh, again I'll bring you guys back with an update as we continue to progress see you in a bit all right, guys, uh, we are back with an update here. And so I have uh, the foundation of my of the house laid out here. And so the idea here is that we're going to have a buffalo and a large deer help us build the house. <laughs> uh, no, we're going to have a, a central hall um, that's going to face east out towards the lake. And then we're going to have uh, a couple of wings, uh, a south and a, and a north wing. One of those wings will be a crafting room. The other one will be a kitchen. And then I'm going to uh, planning on building some kind of a loft in the main hall uh, for our bedroom. And then we're going to do something out over the lake here, too. I haven't com completely decided exactly what that's going to be yet. Um, so, um, as you can see, I just outlined the foundation because what I want to actually do is I want to put in the the nice wood floors uh, in the center so the whole, you know, house isn't just like a stone floor. Um, so, the first thing we want to do uh, to make that happen is we want to make some, I, I don't know, I think we could, that takes 40 stone, that takes 6 yeah, uh, we should be able to just make the beams uh, for the center because we're still going to need support in the center too. So how many of these can I make? 38. Um, just a minor shower. Okay, I don't think we need that many. Let's make... Um, let's make about 15 of these and we'll, we'll see where that gets us. Okay, now in the meantime, we also need to make ourselves a new... Well, I either need to run up back up north and get our carpentry bench and and there's some other stuff I could grab up there too or just make a new one um I guess if I just make a new one we'll we can when we go back up there we can destroy the other one and get half the mats back it's probably gonna be quicker just doing it that way uh okay so what that means is we're gonna need to make uh, 12 of these I think right carpentry bench yeah it's gonna require 120 copper nails and then some wood. Uh, so let's grab one of these and throw that in there. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, let's run over here. One thing I've noticed about this section is, you know, because I'm nearby, the game spawns animals in, and they kind of like just get stuck here. So, you know, when I need to go hunting, it's going to be basically like, you know, 
shooting fish in a pond, so to speak. Um, so anyway, that works in our favor. All right, so what we want to do is we want to uh, grab those pillars and put them in as supports. And I don't know, we might actually need all 15 of these. We'll see what happens here. I'm also planning on building some kind of um, a bridge across the lake too because obviously I don't want to have to swim over here every time we get back over here. So that's probably something we're going to set up more over this way uh, going over to that point to the east there because if we have the bridge come straight out from the house it's, it's going to be a lot longer distance. Uh, but I haven't figured that out yet. We'll see how that goes. I'm kind of making this up as I go a little bit, but in the you know in the end it should be a pretty nice build. All right, so let's grab these pillars and we just need to start setting them in place so they provide support. And yeah, we're gonna need these here like so, and one there. Yeah, we're gonna need more than 16 for sure. I sure like the way the snapping works in this game, though. It's it's just pretty darn amazing, if you think about it. Um, we might need to put pillars along here, too. Maybe? I don't know. Maybe not. We'll see. Okay, so we're going to need one, two, three more there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 ish, I think, something like that. Or just, that was a very quick, rough count. Now, how many more of these can we make now? All right, let's try 14 more and see if that gets us where we need to go. In the meantime, looks like our torch ran out, so I have an extra one here. All right, let's grab all of these out of here and make ourselves a new carpentry bench. Where in the hell we're going to put it? I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't want to get too elaborate with this little shack here because, you know, obviously we're going to have the main house. Okay, so let's grab this and... Um, let's see... Oh, shit, we're on fire. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! -hoo -hoo. I think there's a lake there. Um. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. What else is on fire in here? Crap. Crap. Uh. Can I just pick it up? It might be the quickest thing to do. Whew. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. All right. Um. Let's put this back down. I do have a, a fire whacker, but I figured it was just easier to pick it back up. Uh, that stuff was all in there. Boy, if we would have lost all those electronics, I would have just rage quit. Okay. Um, yeah, be careful with that. So, can we temporarily put this... I wish you could twist it without having to turn your body, you know? What if we remove that for a second? Alright. We're gonna have to also... Let's pull this door back up for a second. Why isn't it letting me take the door up? What the hell? I don't know. Weird. Here, let's just do that and pick the door up from here. Whoops. We'll pick up the bag. I know I'm doing... I'm working too hard, I know. Alright, so if we put this here... Now, can we get the wall back in place? Sticking out a little bit, but hopefully that doesn't matter. All right. Now, let's just stick this 
down here right in the walkway. <laughs> it's really just there for a spawn point more than anything, right? And then we'll put this back in place. Going this way. And there's our spawn point. Okay. I'm not planning on putting anything else um, in here right now. Okay, so um, what we want now is we want some wood. And we're going to need more copper nails too. But let's make some refined wood first. We'll just make as much as we can with that. And then, yeah, we're going to need some copper nails, too. So let's um, let's make some more. How many can I make? 18. That would be 180. Let's make another 10, and we're just going to have to go mine it for some more copper. All right. Now, did we get the pillars, mate? Yes, we did. Let's see if we can finish out the pillars. Okay. So I'm not sure if I'm going to need to also put these on the corners. You know, like right here. Kind of, kind of lagging out, man. So, I'm going to say probably not because there's this little lip here. And that should support a floor that we put in, I would think. Yeah, yeah, that should provide adequate support. Okay, cool. Except for these are going to all be wooden floors, of course. I would think so anyways. I mean, if I if I find out later on that it doesn't, then we'll adjust as needed. Cool. All right, now, let's come back in here. Need to set that door a different way. And we'll grab some more of these. And let's make some interior wood floors. We can make a total of six. So obviously... I got a lot more grinding to do, but I just want to kind of, you know, give you guys the, the flavor here, so to speak. Okay, so there's one of those. There, like that. So the central floor, you know, will be wood, and then the, the outer edges will be stone. I mean, there's not much I can do about that unless I suppose I could use walls. Uh, I don't know, though. Would walls count as foundations? And that's all right. We'll just leave it this way. It'll, it'll, it'll give it some character. We'll give it some character. All right, well, anyways, guys, you get the basic idea of what I'm trying to do here. Unfortunately, the foundations don't come in any, you know, curved or even triangle shapes. They're basically, you get, you're, they're square. You got a square, you got like a pillar kind of thing, or you have a, well, here, I'll just show you. This, These are the only options we have. So we've got the, you know, the normal one. We've got a stone frame pillar. I'm not sure exactly what the difference between that and the other one is, except for that it's a little thicker. And then, you know, you got this little uh, half frame thing with the supports under it, which I might do something with those. haven't decided yet. Uh, but, you know, there's just no option for, like, you know, creating, like, circles or angles or anything like that. So, you know, we're going to have to obviously go with a square build here. But, you know, it'll be cool. I think it'll look good when it's all said and done. All right, you guys. Well... 
uh, that is really pretty much all I have for you right now. I'm going to keep working on the house. i got a lot of grinding to do. Lots more stone. Lots more wood. Um, more copper, iron, you know, the whole nine yards that we've got to work on uh, as we continue to build this house. But I think it's going to look really cool when it's all said and done. So, as usual, I will bring you guys back with an update at some point in the near future as we continue on here. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit.